Hello and welcome to another Tune for Media lesson. Today we're going to tune a small 18 by 12 inches bass drum to fit the style of jazz and maybe more accurate bebop. This is part one of a three parts lesson. So if you're looking for learning how to tune an entire drum kit, make sure to watch all three videos. Let's start. I have here a bass drum with eight lugs and I'm using Remo power stroke on the batter side. And the reason I chose this because the power stroke is a single ply 10 mil with a muffler ring. So it's kind of like a Remo ambassador, but muffled. If I would have used an ambassador, I'd probably put some kind of muffling on the batter side anyways. So the power stroke saved me some time and effort. For my front head, I'm using a Remo Ambassador Fiber Skin. And the reason I chose a Fiber Skin and not a coated or clear Ambassador is honestly because it looks amazing on stage. Ambassador is a 10 mil single ply head, so it's thin, not muffled at all, and has a lot of frequency response. My approach here is that the batter head mostly sets the behavior of the drum in terms of how fast and responsive the drum is, as well as how loud it can get. And the front head, or rezo head, will define the pitch of the drum and it will vary in different places. For example, if I'm playing in an acoustic gig in a big loft, I might tune the pitch higher to let the bass drum cut through, and I'm utilizing the acoustic surroundings to get more low end. In a small studio, I can easily tune the drum lower to get more natural low end from the drum. As a rule of thumb, I'm trying to get the bass drum to sound open, round, and more sustaining than a typical pop rock sound with a lot of tone, but at the same time, I'm trying to keep it a bit lower than the bass player register so it won't sonically interfere with the bass line and quite the opposite, help transmitting the pulse with the bass player. I'm starting by finger tightening the batter head slugs. I'm using a felt mallet that I made with a hot glue, a regular drumstick, and a felt strip. Of course, you can also buy these. The mallet helps me listen to the pitch on each lug to get a good and even sound. When everything is finger tightened, I start to tighten the lugs gradually with a drum key while tapping the center of the drum with the mallet until I'm starting to hear some tone and sustain. To me, the feel of the batter head is more important than the pitch, so I'm constantly feeling the strength of the batter head with my hand. I'm looking for a good tight batter head that is not choked from being too tight and not flappy from being too loose, but somewhere around the middle. So it will feel great and will have a good rebound when striking the drum with the kick pedal. After I'm tuning, I'm pushing the head downward pretty hard because some points over the bearing edges can get caught with the rim during the tuning. So this will release the stuck points. If the pitch is lower after pushing the head, then we've definitely released some stuck points over the bearing edges. And now we have to fine tune the drum head. This is a step that I'll do on every drum head every time I tune a drum. Moving to the front head now, the front head is tuned relatively lower than the batter head. In the front head, I'm focusing more on the pitch. I'm not tuning for a specific note, but a pitch that has a nice low end and is proportionally to the room. Remember that the front head is the one your audience hears. Whether if it's live, mic'd or acoustic, or in the studio, the front head sound is incredibly important. I do exactly the same steps like I did in the batter head, but now I don't care about the feel of the head, but more about the pitch. If the front head is relatively lower than the batter head, it means that every time you're striking the drum, the batter head will shoot a relatively fast energy blast directly to the front head, and the front head will absorb some of the energy and will ring out the rest of it, depending on its tuning, of course. If the front head is too low, then too much energy will be absorbed, so the volume of the bass drum will be low and the sound can be thin due to the fact that the volume is relied more on the batter head. Also, the pitch can be too low for our human hearing range. If the front head is too high, then you might lose a lot of low end from the drum. It's important to always listen to the drum in the room you're in and adjust the front head accordingly.
Thank you for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more. I hope you enjoyed it and see you next time. Stay tuned.